Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about for loops in C++. A for loop is a special type of loop which actually allows us to keep track of how many times we've gone through the loop. So in a for loop, we can use something called an indexing variable. And basically, that indexing variable will allow us to keep track of how many times we've gone through the loop. And you can also use the indexing variable to do a bunch of other stuff too. So I'm going to show you guys how for loops work. We're going to look at why they're useful and in what situations you're going to want to use them. So over here, you'll see that I have this basic program set up. And essentially, I just have a, a while loop over here. So I have this uh, integer, it's called index, and I just set it equal to one. And then while index is less than or equal to five, I'm just printing out the value of index, and then I'm incrementing it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this program, you guys can kind of see what's happening. So you'll see we're basically just printing out one to five. All right, so this is a very simple while loop. And if you've been following along with this course, and you've, you know, hopefully you're familiar with what while loops do at this point. Um, but I want you guys to notice a couple things. So this while loop is special because every time we go through the loop, this variable index tells us what iteration of the loop we're on. So when I run this program, you'll see over here, like the first time we go through the loop, index represents one, right? Index has the value of one. The second time we go through the loop, index has the value of two, third time has the value of three, etc. right? So this index variable is essentially telling us what iteration of the loop we're currently on, right? In other words, on every iteration of the loop, the value inside of this index variable is changing. So it's in our case, it's incrementing by one. But the point is, is that we have this variable, this index variable, and it's essentially just keeping track of how many times we've gone through the loop. Now, in C++ and in just about every major programming language, this is a very, very powerful looping structure. In other words, there's a lot of situations where keeping track of, you know, how many times we've gone through the loop, or even just having a variable that's going to change every time we go through the loop is very useful. And in fact, this is such a useful situation, that there's actually a special loop just to do something like this. So there's a, a special type of loop whose sole purpose is to provide us with a structure very similar to this, where we have this indexing variable that is going to change every time we go through the loop. And in a lot of circumstances, it's actually going to represent what iteration of the loop we're currently on. And that's called a for loop. So I want to show you guys how we can build a for loop. And essentially, a for loop is just going to be exactly what we have up here. It's just going to be a lot more compact and a lot easier for us to use. So to create a for loop, we can just say for, make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. So, so far, it looks exactly like the while loop. Now, the one difference with the for loop is instead of only having one thing up here in the parentheses, so in this while loop, we just have our looping condition, right? A lot of people call this like a loop guard. Um, but down here in this for loop parentheses, we're actually going to have three different things that we want to include. So the first thing that we want to put inside of this for loop parentheses is a variable declaration, variable instantiation. So up here, you'll notice that I'm creating this indexing variable called index, and I'm giving it a value of one. So I'm declaring the variable, and I'm assigning it an initial value, right? I'm initializing the variable. Inside of this for loop parentheses, we can do exactly this. So I could actually just copy this line. And then down here, I can just paste this in here. And instead of calling it index, why don't we just call it I so I is going to stand for index, we'll set it equal to one, then you'll notice I have this semicolon here. After I put this semicolon, we can actually put another line. So another thing that we have in this while looping structure is our loop guard, right, this loop condition, it's essentially telling us uh, when we should loop. So if this condition up here is true, then we want to keep looping. So that's the next thing that we want to put inside of this for loop parentheses. So we're putting this variable declaration and initialization. And then down here, we're also going to put the looping condition. So this is going to tell the loop when it should stop and when it should go. All right, so then I'm also going to put another semicolon here. So you'll notice I have a semicolon here after we create this variable. And I have another semicolon here after we specify the looping guard. The next thing I want to do is put in a line of code that's going to get executed after each iteration of the loop. Up here in this while loop, you'll notice that we have this line of code over here index plus plus, this line of code is going to get executed at the end of every single loop iteration. So the last thing that we're going to do when we go through this while loop is increment the index variable, right? 
So that's essentially what we're gonna put over here. We're gonna put a line of code, which is gonna get executed after every iteration of this loop. And in our case, we're just gonna increment this variable i. So I'm just gonna say i plus plus. We're adding one to i. Now again, I could put essentially any line of code here that I want. I mean, I could put like i minus minus. I could do, you know, basically whatever I want. But in our case, we're just gonna increment i just like we did up here with index. So now inside of this for loop body, inside of these open and closed curly brackets, we can just put whatever we wanna do on each iteration of the loop. So that's gonna be this line up here. So I could actually just paste this guy in right here. And now we have a completed for loop. So believe it or not, this loop down here is actually equivalent to this loop up here. You'll notice this took one, two, three, four lines of code, whereas this only takes two lines of code. So like I said, this is such a common scenario where we wanna have a variable like index, which is you know essentially changing every time we go through the loop and can allow us to keep track of things like the current loop iteration. Such a common situation that there's a special loop called a for loop for that. And the for loop, the first thing we do is create the variable just like I did up there. So I'm initializing this variable. The next thing we do is specify the looping guard, the looping conditions, that's what I did here. And then we specify a line of code that's gonna get executed after every iteration of the loop, which is gonna be this I plus plus. And you'll notice that these are all separated with semicolons. And you'll notice also that I don't need a semicolon over here. So let's actually get rid of this while loop and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what happens when we run the for loop. And actually I need to change these to i. So instead of this being index, I'm just gonna leave it as i. And this is also gonna be i. So we have int i is equal to one. We're gonna keep looping as long as i is less than or equal to five. And then at the end, we're just gonna increment i. So we're gonna say i plus plus. And every time through the loop, we are printing out i. So let's go ahead and run this code. And you'll see we get the same exact output as we did with the while loop. So it's just still just one, two, three, four, five. So what's cool about these for loops is we can essentially like keep track of a value every time we go through. And in our case, we're basically just keeping track of how many times we've gone through the loop. So I wanna show you guys uh, how we can use these for loops to actually iterate through the contents of an array. So let's say I created an array of integers. So we'll just call it like nums. And I'm just gonna give this an initial value. So why don't we just say one, two, five, seven, three. All right, so I have this array of integers and it just has a bunch of numbers in it. And if you recall with integers, if we wanted to access a specific element inside of this list, I could just say like nums and then put the index in here. So if I said nums zero, this is gonna give us access to this one. If I said nums four, it's gonna give us access to zero, one, two, three, four. It's gonna give us access to this three. What I could actually do is I could modify my for loop down here in order to actually loop through and print out all the contents of this array. So array indexes start at zero. So I'm gonna start this i variable at zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna say i is less than the number of elements inside of the array. So inside of this array, we have one, two, three, four, five elements. So I'm gonna say while i is less than five, we wanna keep looping. And then I'm just gonna say i plus plus. And down here, instead of printing out i, I could actually just print out nums i. And what this is gonna do is on the first iteration of the loop, it's gonna print out nums zero. On the second iteration of the loop, it's gonna print out nums one. On the third iteration of the loop, it's gonna print out nums two, et cetera. And it's gonna do that all the way up to nums four, which as we saw is gonna be this three. So that's gonna be the last element in the array. So we can actually use this for loop to loop through all the elements in the nums array. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see over here, we're printing out all of the elements. So we're printing out one, two, five, seven, three. So that is a very common situation. We can use for loops to iterate over the elements inside of an array, and it can be really useful. So play around with these for loops. These are extremely useful. Um, and one more time, I just wanna go over the structure. So the first thing we're doing over here is we're um, creating a variable or we're initializing a variable. So I'm saying int i is equal to zero. And then I'm specifying my looping guard. So my loop condition, I'm saying we're gonna keep looping as long as i is less than five. And then this is a line of code that'll get run after every iteration of the loop. So 
every time we go through this loop, we'll come up here, run this line of code, and then we'll check the condition again. That is the basics of a for loop. This is a very useful loop. I would say this is almost even more widely used than a while loop in a lot of situations. So you definitely want to practice and play around with these for loops. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.